nine ways to identify the spirit of religion. The spirit of religion is very blinding. It's very active in the church. It was active in Jesus' day. You can read the Gospels and you can see the spirit of religion operating in the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all of the religious people who had the nice outward priestly religious garments, but on the inside their hearts were full of darkness. So we got to be careful of this spirit of religion. I've had a lot of this spirit of religion and this is why I'm sharing this with you is because because I do not desire for this to be you. I desire for you to be delivered, to be set free, to be healed, to have the heart of David. God wants you to have a heart that's after him. It's just seeking Jesus. It's on fire for God. It's filled with the love of the Lord. And a reason why you may not be on fire for God and filled with the love and peace of the Lord in your heart might be because you have the spirit of religion and you may not know it until now. Either that or you're here because you want wisdom to be able to discern this spirit and to pray for those people. So number one is that it attends church and does the rituals but has no true inward transformation. We don't want to just be churchgoers. We don't want to just be people who go to church on Sundays, who are just mundanely going through the practices, going through just the rituals and doing the good old church thing every Sunday. But we want true transformation in our heart. James says that if anyone is a hearer, and not a doer, they are blinded. Okay, they're like <laughs> someone expecting results and not seeing true transformation. So if you're just hearing the word and not doing the word, it brings curses upon your life. We must be not just hearers, but doers of the word. Faith without works is dead. When you actually believe God's word, when you actually have faith, then you act upon that word. You do that word. You trust in that word and you move in that word because we don't want to just hear the word. We want to live the word. We don't want to just read the Bible. We want to walk in the spirit we want to be carriers of the holy spirit living out the bible living out true holy spirit filled transformation if not we become religious we become the mundane cold dark person who's just going there on sunday and not having true transformation number two the spirit of religion it fears men more than God. We see in the Gospels that there was religious leaders. They saw Jesus. It says that they, some of them believed in Jesus, but they would not outwardly proclaim it because of the fear of man. The fear of man will lead to bondage. But the Spirit of the Lord is liberty. We don't want to move out of the fear of man, right? How are you going to share Jesus and the gospel when you fear man, when you're scared of what man will think of you? The spirit of religion can go to church on Sunday. It can go through the church practices. But when it comes time to share its faith, the spirit of religion can't do it because it fears man. Okay, so even some of the Pharisees, even some of the religious people and high ranks and authorities, it says they wanted to believe in Jesus, but they could not outwardly because of the fear of man. So number three is it's always testing the spirit of God. 
The spirit of religion is looking at the people who truly have the Holy Spirit and it's testing them. It's testing the spirit of God in that man. This is what the Pharisees and the Sadducees did to Jesus. Jesus is there casting out demons by the power of God, by the finger of God, it says, that he casted out demons. And you know what they said? They said, it's by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons, or the prince of demons, that you're casting out Jesus. That you're casting out demons. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, a house divided against itself does not stand. Jesus said, if Satan casts out Satan, then how does Satan's house stand? So they're looking at Jesus. They're seeing healings. They're seeing miracles. And they're just testing him. You can flip all throughout the Gospels. I'm not going to read a specific verse to you on this, but you can flip all throughout the Gospels, seeing how they're testing Jesus. Mark 3, there's the man in the synagogue with the withered hand, but it's a Sabbath, right? They're, they're honoring, outwardly honoring the Sabbath, and they know the man is there with the withered hand, and there comes Jesus. So it says they're waiting to see if Jesus is going to do a healing on the Sabbath. So they get so caught up in practices and rules that it hardens and it blinds their heart from having a true repentant heart for God. So it's always testing the Spirit of the Lord inside the true Holy Spirit-filled believers. Number four, it's always checking and testing what other people are doing instead of looking at their own heart and deeds. You don't need to always be searching and testing other people what they're doing, especially the Lord's anointed. What are you doing for God? Where does God have you positioned? Where does God want you? What is God calling you to do? What's the will of God for your life? Check yourself. Look at your own heart. Where does God want you positioned? These are the questions we should be asking ourselves. What are my gifts? Instead of looking at other people's gifts, judging their gifts, judging how they're moving and acting in their gifts, when praise God that they're exercising their gifts. Yeah, people stumble, people fail, people make mistakes. People aren't perfect which is why we're not testing and checking other people. We're looking at ourselves, seeing how we can progress in the kingdom of God, seeing how we can grow in righteousness. Because when you're always checking and testing other people, this will lead to bondage in your mind. It will lead to tormenting thoughts in your mind when you're constantly checking other people and when you are the one who needs to cry out to God and repent. And if you're realizing that you got some of the spirit of religion, cry out to God, repent. God will lift up the lowly. He will exalt the humble. Number five, the spirit of religion is critical, judgmental, and accusatory. It's very critical of itself. It's very critical, judgmental, and always accusing other people. Number six, it loves to please people above God. The spirit of religion, everything it does, it may be serving in church, it may be leading a ministry, but everything it does, it's just to please other people. It loves the praise of men. It wants to be praised and lifted up by men, but we are called to do all things heartily unto God and not unto men because when you start to do things to please men, 
It brings bondage when men don't say thank you, when men don't praise you. But when you know that you're truly doing it for God, it doesn't matter what other people say. It doesn't matter if they see you don't need an award. You don't need recognition. You don't need any of that. It's it's like superficial to you because your heart is for God. You're laboring out of love when you truly want to do it for God and it should fill you working for God should fill you serving God should fill you but if you have the spirit of religion then you're just looking to please people not God so your work isn't actually filling you it doesn't matter if you work at a McDonald's at a drive through or if you work in an office desk when you do it for the Lord you can still have love in your heart you can still be filled with the Holy Spirit number seven it tries to earn God's love and salvation. The spirit of religion is trying to earn the grace of God. It's trying to earn the favor of God. But you can't earn God's grace. You can't earn God's favor. It's by the blood of Jesus that the grace of God falls upon his children. That the supernatural favor and God grace and favors people who he chooses. He just chose Abraham and he just chose to pour out his favor upon him and all the generations that would fill the earth after him. Why? Because of the grace of God. It's not anything that Abraham did. Abraham made mistakes. He messed up just like every other person in the Bible. David made mistakes. He messed up, but he had a repentant soft heart okay so you cannot earn god's grace you cannot earn god's favor but don't get it mixed up because obedience will bring blessings we know that obedience obeying the commands of god it brings blessings when we obey god we walk in blessings we walk in favor number eight the spirit of religion is angry prideful, resentful, and stubborn. 1 Samuel 15, stubbornness is as idolatry. Stubbornness be can become an idol in your life. You're idolizing yourself. You're idolizing your stubbornness and you don't even know it but you're stubborn towards the pastor, toward the leader, toward the David sitting next to you. It's stubbornness so the spirit of religion it's always angry it's always prideful it's resentful toward those who are doing the will of god and number nine it wants church positions and fake titles and honor from men more than honor from god in the spirit positions are in the spirit Titles are in the spirit. Your identity is in the spirit. Pastor isn't a title. Evangelist isn't something that you put on your IG bio. It's not something that you have in your Facebook bio. Okay, the spirit of religion just wants praise of man. It wants church positions. It wants fake titles. It's focused on superficial, natural things and not the things of the spirit, not the things of the Holy Ghost, which is peace and love and joy and righteousness dwell in the kingdom of God my desire for you is that you dwell in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking it's peace and joy and righteousness in the Holy Ghost get your peace have your joy repent if you need to repent call out to God if you need to call out to God get on your hands and knees repent God will restore the mind everything that the enemy has taken you may have served in church for tens and tens of years with the spirit of religion with a hardened heart 
thinking that you're serving God, but you're actually not. And now you want to repent. God will restore. He'll restore your mind. He'll break the calluses off your heart. And he'll give you that heart of flesh that beats for him. That wants to serve him out of love and do his will out of love. God bless you, my friend. Be mindful and discerning of the spirit of religion. Be mindful and discerning of people who are operating in this spirit, okay? Don't judge them. Don't condemn them. But pray for them in the spirit because prayer is a powerful sword and it will set people free. The, when we pray and open up our mouth and proclaim and speak God's word over people, it pierces to the division of spirit and soul, of joint and of marrow, and it discern the thoughts and intents of heart. It will change people's mind. It will change their hearts, and it will change them in the spirit. So if you discern someone with the spirit of religion, pray for them in the name of Jesus. God will do it. God bless you, my friend. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode. Amen and amen.